So this is the first video product review I've ever done, but I was inspired by how terrible this product is and figured you just have to see it for yourself to believe it. This is the Pioneer SPH-DA210, which is supposedly the top of the line in their app radio car stereos. The first thing you'll notice is the ridiculous number of cables and adapters you have to buy to make this work. You're going to spend about $95 in cables and adapters just to connect your phone to the head unit. And it's very messy, and unfortunately you can't hide them because you'll see later in the video, you have to handle the phone regularly just to make it work. So let's turn, turn on the ignition here. And when the system starts, you'll see that you're forced to hit the OK button every single time. It won't go away. It often takes a while for the system to start up and connect to your phone, and you'll see some yellow arrows on the app icon uh, indicating this. I had left a podcast playing when I turned it off before the video, and you'll notice it doesn't start playing again. You just get silence. And notice I tried to press the iPod icon, but it's disabled. Pioneer purposely disabled this function if you use an iPhone instead of an actual iPod. Can't imagine why every other audio system treats an iPhone the same as an iPod. Since this button is disabled, you'll be forced to use Pioneer's media player on the phone. So when it finally connects, the app's icon is selectable, and it puts this message on your phone every single time. You have to tap allow every time you get in the car and every time you start the apps. Then you wait a few seconds, and it forces you to fiddle around with the brake handle to tell it that you are indeed parked or it won't show video. But the problem is, there's no actual video. You'll see here I'm uh, basically just disconnecting and reconnecting the brake sensor so that I can actually hit the OK button. And what they call video is actually uh, displaying the apps from your phone onto the display. So believe it or not, you will have to be parked to use mapping. So here we start the car media player and you have to use, like I said, their media player and well, as you can see, it has locked up. Um, so we're going to have to stop the video, uh, do a complete reset, and uh, try it again because once it locks up like this, usually I find that you just can't go back to, to doing anything without a complete reset of both the stereo and the phone. And I'll go ahead and try it again, but yeah, blank screen. This should be showing the media player on the display, so we'll go ahead and stop and reset the system. And now we're back after a full reset, and this involves disconnecting the battery cable and rebooting the phone. Sometimes just doing one or the other fixes it, but really, uh, that's not, you can't count on that. Many times it doesn't. So now we'll go through the same startup process again. You see that it's just trying to connect to the, <coughs> the phone right now, and that'll take a little while. Uh, also, after the reset, then you have to readjust the angle of the display if you had it uh, at anything but the zero position. Now the app's icon is selectable again. Well, no, maybe not. And once again, sometimes you just don't know what this thing is doing, so it's still trying to connect. Uh, note that after we try to connect, we'll have to go through the same uh, break uh, goofiness and hit allow on the phone again uh, to make it work at all. So yes, this means every time you get in the vehicle you're going to have to pull the parking brake up and back down. Uh, as most of us you know, really don't use the parking brake, we just put the car in park. So now we'll try and play media again and this time it does actually fire up the, uh, the media player. It just takes a little while, and you'll see it has a great display. Um, you can do things like, uh, you know, slide on the screen, pause and play. But notice also that there aren't any hardware buttons, so you always have to look at the display to make the any changes to the audio that's playing. And look what happens if I exit the media application. The system goes dark. I have no way to control the audio anymore, uh, and I can't do anything on the screen. So it's showing me a representation of the iPhone screen, but it actually doesn't do anything at all on the screen. So now if I want to pause or change tracks, I've got to go back through the entire apps process, start the application, hit allow on my phone, wait for the controller app to load, 
let's try, well, let's try navigating somewhere. While I'm listening, let's try navigating. Um, so what it does is actually fires up the Waze app on the phone, but look at how the display is screwed up. That's because it's trying to show uh, the screen just as a copy of the screen. So now you have to grab your phone again, turn it sideways, and look what, look what it does. I can't touch the screen. The touchscreen functionality for navigation does not work on the device. You have to use it on your phone. Pretty ridiculous, pretty useless. Why would I even bother? Um, I would just do it on the phone. So let's go back over to the apps and see if the built-in mapping is any better. Of course, I have to go through the same ridiculous process of allowing the app to run on the phone and waiting for it to connect. Uh, the, you have more than one screen full of apps. In this case, I only have one, so that's why it didn't scroll. So let's go ahead and try the built-in Maps application. So that uh, starts up in a default view. Um, you can see you have you know, your typical Google Maps type of views. Um, if you want it to show you where you actually are, you have to press the location button, and then it'll zoom in. Um, you know, doesn't do anything. All it does is show you the exact location where you are. It has no navigation capabilities. So let's say I want to pause my music or skip to the next track. Now I've got to fire up the media player again, which you can see takes a little while to connect. And now I can do things like pause and uh, change tracks. Uh, it's not possible to change it on the phone itself. So you have to touch the phone constantly, but you can't use it on the on the phone. And look what happens if I exit the media app. All it does is show me a copy of the screen, but again, I can't touch it or do anything with it. Now I've lost all control of my media, and I can't use the iPod icon because they've disabled it. So on the bright side, the phone portion of it is very, very good. Uh, it's easy to use, has the uh, Siri eyes free mode, um, has your contacts list, preferences uh, for your phone, presets, and uh, you know lots of good features for the phone. Um, it seems to sound pretty good, but unfortunately, that, that's really the, the best thing that I could say about this system. You can see that there are a lot of uh, options in the settings here. Uh, it's a pretty full-featured system as far as being able to connect things like a backup camera, uh, as far as being able to program uh, your preferences, your auto, audio preferences, there's a, a graphic equalizer, there are several filters and subwoofer settings that you can do. So y you have quite a bit of pretty good control. So let's say you're a Pandora user, right here on the main menu, fire it up, and once again, then you have to touch your phone to tell it to allow the Pandora app to run. Um, so, you know, again, there's no way to just do this without holding the phone all the time. Uh, once it's loaded, then you know your stations are on there, and it, it works as usual. Nothing uh, special, or you know, no problems with it once you're actually using it. Overall, um, you know, the system just uh, constantly requires you to be using the phone, and is very dependent on that app being on and in the foreground. On the other hand, if you uh, just want to use this for radio, satellite, things like that. Those functions work fine. The displays are nice, um, and everything works. But you know, why would you pay this kind of money for something that is so complicated uh, if you're just going to use very basic features? Um, and one other important thing to note is that the Bluetooth doesn't uh, work for music. They've disabled that ability too because I guess they assume you are going to want to buy all their cables and use their built-in apps. So you can't even just use it as a Bluetooth media device. And uh, another important note is that anytime a reminder or uh, a banner comes across your screen, it actually covers their uh, media apps and disables it, just like you saw switching out of the app would kill it. So overall, the system is uh, totally unusable.